Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I decided to make simple chicken and rice, cold cut sandwiches, or pizza. We're going for pizza. Never can go wrong with pizza. Pizza is always good, no matter what the time of day it is. Do we have any? Luckily, we had some pizza in the freezer to heat up. Peace amours, baked with love pizza, had all the making of pizza types, including pepperoni, sausages, mushroom, and extra cheese. Just top it, bake it, and serve it. I'll have to get more later. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried that dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating into different rooms of the house. Rude. Why not just come to the dining room, man? Part of me wanted to go to one of Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to just leave them be and take the food in my hand to the room and eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys focus on training. No, let's go find one of the incubi. I quickly rushed back and grabbed a second food dish before hunting down one of the boys. I looked down each hall, trying to find one of the incubi wandering so that I wouldn't have to go through each individual individual room finding them. I pursed my lips in irritation. Where the heck are they? I sighed, knowing that I would have to search for them in each room. I turned my head down the west hall before I suddenly bumped into an open I bumped into an opening door face first. Ooh, that must hurt. Oof! Whoa! What the? I quickly stepped back, regaining my balance on my feet and with the food in my hands. The last thing I wanted was food on the floor. Yeah, there always food, man. Food is good. <clears throat> I shook my head and looked up to see Sam looking at me from behind the door in surprise. Being that I only saw his face, he was wet. So I assumed that the door led to a bathroom he was exiting from. Yeah, let's assume that. Oh, crap. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah. I uh, brought food. What the hell? What did I say? I shook my head and acted like I knew what I said. Sam raised an eyebrow before looking to the food I brought. Oh, hey. Thanks. You're welcome. Ooh, you look good. Yes, you look good, Sam. Absolutely. As Sam stepped out from behind the bathroom door and closed it, I was suddenly face to face with a shirtless and freshly cleaned Sam. A simple towel was hanging over his shoulders as he looked to me. I remained frozen, unable to tear my eyes away from the sight. Damn, was he ripped. Hey, you alright? Hello? <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was enjoying the view. Uh, blah, blah. Sam let a sly smirk appear on his lips before tapping my forehead with his finger. It was light, but I still felt pressure from it to, pu to push me back a bit on my feet. You gonna give me my food or do you plan to keep staring into space like a nut job? Staring into space like a nut job does seem like a good option though. Huh? Oh, right. Here. <laughs> I quickly gave Sam his foot, glaring at him. He chuckled before quickly dropping to the floor and crossing his legs to sit. I did a double take down at him before joining him to eat. I was hungry, so might as well. Sam must have, Sam must have been hungry because he practically scarfed all of his food down before I could get two bites out of mine. Jeez, you eat fast. Oh, oh sorry, it was good, yeah. Thanks. Sam sat in silence, waiting for me to finish. It was odd. It was not far from having a dog watch you while you ate. Nevertheless, hey, he's dressed again. Nevertheless, I finished my food quicker than I normally did and looked to Sam, who somehow got his shirt and vest on while I wasn't looking. Damn, was he fast. <clears throat> All right then, I'm heading up to the roof. Roof? Roof? He was heading to the roof? Why? Uh, Ebba, the roof? Yeah, wanna come with? Hold on, he wanted me to join him. 
on the roof. The roof of a huge mansion? How? Why? I promise you won't fall or whatever. Okay? Okay, if you say I don't fall. I didn't know why I was up for it. Up for this, but I said okay. The small, adventurous side of me was very happy with my decision. But another side of me was screaming at me, asking me why I did that. Sam took the empty dishes and placed them on a nearby stand before walking to a nearby window and looking to me. Wait, a window? Come on. I walked towards Sam, unsure of what he wanted to do. As I stepped to his side, he wrapped a tight arm around my waist and hugged me against his side. Whoa! Better hold on tight. Yeah! I instantly wrapped my arms around Sam as he opened the window and stepped up on the latch. I could feel him tighten his grip on me as he looked up and grabbed the end of the roof with his free hand. Oh, that's pretty. I gripped tightly to him as he somehow was able to pull both of us up to the roof with that one hand. He lifted me to the roof first before pulling himself up and sitting with a consent sigh. See? I told you I wouldn't let you fall. I could still fall, Sam. <laughs> Day's not over. Yeah. I sat up beside Sam, trying to shake off what had happened. He was a demon. I had to remember that. Not matter how human he looked. Pretty sight, huh? I raised my eyebrow before looking ahead of us. I gasped. The sight was truly beautiful. The estate was settled on a high hill, so the view I saw made me feel like I was flying. I could see Chicago in the distance, surrounded by forests and su suburbs, like the one I resided in. Something about the sight took my breath away. I silently thank my adventurous side for taking the risk to come up here. You know, it's things like this that make the human world worth coming to. I turned to Sam at his statement, unsure of what he meant. He kept his eyes to the view, but I could see very soft amazement in his eyes. What do you mean? I'm not like my brothers. I didn't come to get away from anything or to fulfill something. Whatever they may tell you their reasons were, I came because... Well, they're my brothers, and that's that. However, I didn't expect the human world to be so pretty. I didn't understand. The brothers were running from more than just Malik's? What could have possibly driven them from where they were? You all ran from something? We all had our reasons for leaving the Abyssal Plains. James didn't want to deal with his problems. Matthew wanted to live with humans more than demons. I came because I didn't want to be without my brothers, so I left with them. That's rather sweet, if you think about it. It doesn't matter. I came, so here I am. I frowned a bit. I frowned and bit my lips slightly. I wasn't sure if he even wanted to be here with how he was answering. Still. I felt a small wave of confidence drive me to scoot closer to Sam. I wanted to try to be his friend. To be friends, not to be his friend. Fate didn't like that, apparently. I felt myself losing my balance and wound up starting to fall off the roof. I told you day wasn't over. Ah! Whoa! Instantly, Sam grabbed me and pulled me to him. He wrapped his arms around me making sure I wasn't able to fall back down the roof. But that wasn't what made me blush widely from ear to ear. I had somehow landed and straddled over his lap. He was hugging me close to his chest. It was almost like a romance scene in a love story. I couldn't tear my eyes away from Sam as he stared up at me in concern. I got you. You okay? Yes, I am. However, I continued to look down at him as he stared up at me. Neither of us knew what to do and I could feel that we were both lost in that fact. As we looked at each other, Sam's face, mm -mm, Sam's face grew slightly red. Hey, um, I might as well say it now, but sorry for being a dick when we met. I must have been dreaming. Sam was being sincere. 
Why? However, as I stared, I could feel his strength weaken. He was shaking, but continued to hold me to keep me safe from falling. Sam, do you need energy? Sam's eye widened before he looked away, refusing to answer, but refusing to let me go. I didn't feel any energy drain, so he wasn't trying to take advantage of the situation. That was it. He needed energy. But should I give it? Yeah, of course. Let's just kiss him. No, not wait. I don't want to fall. <laughs> I don't want to kiss Sam. I gently grabbed Sam's face and tilted his hat to an angle with mine, leaning in closer to him. I brought my lips to his and kissed him deeply. I didn't know if this would help, but it was how he got energy before. I shut my eyes, waiting for the draining feeling to reappear in my body. Sam didn't move, nor did I feel energy drain from me. I opened my eyes and saw Sam staring wide-eyed at me, but unmoving. He was unsure of what to do and I had silenced him with confusion. Well, it isn't that weird that he's confused. I mean, he did get slapped like twice because he kissed you before. <laughs> well, now you're kissing him. So. It's different, but I can understand the confusion. <laughs> I don't know why, but I felt both irritated and accomplished at the question and at the look he was giving me. For where was his flirting? Where was his cocky smirk? From what I remembered, he took advantage of me when we met. Yet now he was somehow intimidated by me? I pulled away and spoke. I want you s I want to give you some of my energy. You used a lot of it and I'm sure that the energy you took from me was only used for healing. Let me help you. I uh, I mean I really I don't Sam, if you don't want my energy, just tell me. But I'm offering it to you if you do. All of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warmth running through my body once again. I felt my body slightly heat up as Sam pulled my body tighter to his. He regained his stoic gaze before speaking. Just remember, you offered it. Yeah, I remember. I know it was with consent, so no slapping this time. Like, <laughs> Alright, let's get in the mood. The sexy mood. It's a nice picture to see it like this. Before I knew it, Sam pulled me into a gentle but passionate kiss. Heat erupted through my body as he kissed slowly and almost timidly got deeper. Sam kept an arm around my waist while I rested my hands on his chest. The energy from my body was slowly draining from the kiss, making me feel light and warm. It was almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing I was in the situation. Still, I had no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of this kiss. Sam gently leaned back, pulling me along with him so that I was laying on top of him. I felt odd yet comfortable to be the one in control. Sam wasn't forceful as he was as he was when we first met, and I felt almost magical. It was how I imagined the first kiss to be like, except with energy drain. Soon though, the energy drain stopped as Sam gently pushed my face away to end the kiss. I stared down at him as we both panted for air. I had never kissed like that before. And I was so lost in the moment that I'd forgotten how to breathe. Well, that's not good. I mean, you can have a good, good kiss, but f forget how to breathe? Sam moved and strained the hair from my face to behind my ear. Eyes still full of desire. The look in Sam's eyes, though. I, could om I almost couldn't find the strength to pull away. I could feel the hold of his mind-altering spell fade away. But I still felt hot. Something told me that I wanted more, but at the same time, I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. Yeah, let's keep going. We're in the mood now, so let's go. I opened the opportunity 
and I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more, and I was going to let him keep going. I wanted to keep going. I leaned down and kissed him again. Sam gasped against my lips, but continued to kiss back. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it and following his hands off from around my neck. He removed the ribbon to his pocket before gently unbuttoning the top two buttons of my blouse. The desire in my body drove me insane, forcing a moan to escape my lips as he ran kissed from my lips down to my exposed neck. As he began to ravage my neck and shoulder in hot kisses, I leaned my head back and let a pleasureful sigh escape my lips. Sam was rootless in his passionate kisses on my skin. Sam didn't stop touching and kissing me, making more moans and gas rush out of my mouth into the open air. He may have been full, but he was as hot as I was. I couldn't even comprehend how much time we spent making out. I was so lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond anything at that moment, even as he lowered his kisses down my chest, just above my bra. My heart beating wildly in my chest. Something about Sam intrigued me immensely, but something made my heart quicken for him. It couldn't have been love, but it was too passionate to be lost. What was it? However, I began to feel dizzy, seeing the sky, <laughs> seeing the sky start to spin almost wildly. I gripped to Sam's shoulders, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded to black before I could let out another sound. I felt good. <laughs> That's good. I didn't care that I was blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I now just waited to be awakened. Hopefully in a good way. Yeah, not on the floor at the, at, at the uh, falling off, t off the roof, something like that. My eyes eventually flooded open, adjusting to the side around me. I felt familiar silk underneath me. Letting me know that I was in my bed. <gasps> Yay, my bed! I slowly sat up, scratching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain on my neck and shoulders, and I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently and healing. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned as if nothing had happened between me and Sam. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned to get out of bed, though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow beside the one I slept on. It was tied in a nice bow, with a small note attached to it. I gently slipped the note from the tie and opened it to read it. Sorry, I went a little too far. Yeah, a little bit, but this time you weren't a jerk, so points for you. I stared, I stared the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. He went too far. I enjoyed it, despite the first time's circumstances. It was cute, though, to imagine him thanking me for something we both did and enjoyed. I brought the note to my chest, letting the memories of our meeting flood my mind. I indulged myself, too, Sam. I looked at the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone said fifth, five. 31 p.m. Yikes. Four hours of being knocked out, and I still feel tired. It was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. Well, you can sleep any day, man. I mean, yeah, school wouldn't like it, but you're allowed. The remainder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect, but I felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. They, had, they most likely had already eaten, but still, I felt lonely. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. 
Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I felt like I could have a peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. I felt good. I drifted to sleep and woke up almost flawlessly the next morning. No grogginess, no aches, perfectly energized and bright-eyed. Man, how long has it been since I got that much good sleep? Winner! I looked to my alarm clock. I woke up 10 minutes before my alarm. Oh, that's so nice. <gasps> well, hey, I must be lucky today. Karma owed me some luck. After all I had gone through in merely a handful of days, I deserved to get some good luck. Aesthetic for the day ahead, I turned off my alarms before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming text. Hmm, who's texting me this early? Yo, Anderson, you're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stat. Oh, that's so sweet. I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet and I didn't have a car. So it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. I checked the time. 6.30. Perfect. I can eat some breakfast before they come. I packed my bag and carried it downstairs towards the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate with eggs, toast and bacon sitting on the table. A fresh steaming cup of coffee sat next to the plate, with a sugar and a, scream and a creamer on the side. I walked to the table and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Who made this? As I spoke out loud, a small red note caught my attention. Have a good day? Yours? My heart skipped a beat as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys. Yeah, who else could it have been, man? Come on. Maybe it was from him. I smiled before putting the note in my bag and eating up. The food was so delicious. I devoured every amazing bite. I looked at the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Before I could reach the handle of the door, however, someone took my hand. Huh? Ah, oh, it's a Sam. I turned to see Sam, who was holding my hand back with a stern look on his face. My name. Your name? My true name isn't Sam. I want you to know my real name if something happens. His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? I remember reading about demons' names from the journal. I read yesterday. <laughs> Cut them. If you knew a demon's true name, you could summon them to you, no matter where you were or where they are or where they were. Sam gently <laughs> Sam gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is Amaris. Amaris. I like it. It's a nice name. Amaris. As he said his name, I could feel it lock into my memory. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. Sam pulled away and stared at me, despite still carrying worry in his eyes. If you're in any danger, any time, it doesn't matter when, call my name. I promise that I'll come and help you. I stared up at Sam, unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. Sam nodded back before releasing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that name would be used eventually. Yeah, think so too. <laughs> and right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Suzu waiting me down. I rushed out the door and we headed to school, talking about homework in the coming day. We made it into school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall. So we quickly unloaded what we needed to <sighs> So we quickly unloaded what we needed to to I don't know. Okay, calm down. And got our important books and necessities. First incident of the day. We just started, man. Come on. As I walked towards Suzu and Naomi, who were both wa waiting for me on the opposite side of the hall. Something hooked my ankle and made me fall forward. Lisette. 
Whoa! Ow! Hey, are you okay? Who did that? The three of us looked back to see Lisette and her gaggle of girls. Lisette had a look of complete innocence, while the girls around her giggled like no tomorrow. Why, you little... Suzu, don't! I felt a giant fire of anger burn in my stomach as I stared at Lisette. Today was not the only time this had happened to me. However, it was now clear who was behind these incidents. Even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, it was now obvious that Lisette was the mastermind from just from the look on her face. She was no friend, nor would she ever be. I had to do something. Get her, Claire, into her soul, stand up and walk away. We're going to get her. And uh, it's because of Sam's route, so I'm a bit more towards uh, standing up for yourself. Yeah, it is kind of a violent way. In real life, I would never encourage that to, to lose it and to fight back like that. I think standing up and walking away would hurt her more because she wants a reaction. But sometimes just um, giving someone it could also yeah, show them not to mess with you. That they've gone really too far. Although I don't see this situation as going too far. I mean, tripping me. You can fall really badly. So yeah. And if it happened before, I think it's a difficult situation. But for now, let's get her. I had enough. Woo! Let's go. I felt adrenaline. I felt adrenaline rush through my body as I pounced off the ground and rushed at Lisette. I was not going to be the only one with scrapes this time. I tackled Lisette to the ground, swinging and slapping her innocent face. She screamed in fright before trying to push me off and block my attacks. Holy shit! Anderson! Stop it! Ha! <laughs> You're at the background like poof poof! <laughs> We're beating up her up nicely, man. I wasn't listening anymore. I let my carnal need to get revenge take over. As I began to pull at Lisette's hair to get better aim at her face with my free hand. God damn it! I had enough of her pulling, the wounds, the insult. All of that was going burn in the past as I scraped my nails and hand across Lisette's face over and over. My rebellion would be marked on her pretty face for all to see. Lisette pushed me off and scrambled to her feet, both panicking and angry at the same time. Her emotion was nowhere close to that anger I was feeling. Are you crazy? What the hell? What the hell, girl? I stood up very slowly, glaring daggers into Lisette's soul through her eyes. Well, she has her wide open, so we can do that good. I must have had some sort of monster behind me. Or maybe I looked like the monster myself. But the gaggle of girls... Lisette and even my friend had a look of pure terror on their faces. I have had enough of you, Lisette. You obviously won't stop unless I fight back. Well, guess what? You're gonna get it. Woo, we're going again. <laughs> yes. I charged at Lisette a second time, shoving her hard against the lockers. She let out a yelp of pain as she smacked the back of her head against the metal behind her before glaring and shoving me back. As I stumbled back, Lisette raised her hands, ready to fight! Let's go! Then come on, Anderson! Show me what you've got! I bet it's not much! <laughs> I just kicked your ass before I would do it again. I felt myself snarl in anger before raising my own fist, remembering my Taekwondo! Taekwondo! I quickly snapped onto one leg and raised a leg to get swift kick at her head but she blocked with the arm and stepped towards me to jab at me she had training not surprising i didn't care at that moment i bent back away from the incoming jab re-establishing my balance as i placed both feet on the floor the sat threw jab upon jab at me forcing me to black my torso and face with my arms and hands. I'm 
sorry if I'm not really right. I'm just in the mood. Come on. Hit for hit. He sat and I exchanged and defended blows at each other. It was it was indeed more than just a cat fight. It was a vengeful duel. Yeah, Power Rangers, go! <laughs> in my mind, all I saw was Suzette. All I wanted to do was make, to make her stop. And if this man beating her down, then it had to be done. Well, he eventually gained a small crowd of people. Well, that the whole school is isn't watching is a surprise to me. All silent but deserving the fight. My anger intensified and my hits became harder with each second that passed between us. I couldn't let her win. I wouldn't let her win. None of these sad girls dared to step in. Apparently afraid that to after seeing our skills and our individual fighting styles. Susan was held back by Naomi's arms, despite both of them wanting to help me. They didn't wait long. Uh, they didn't wait long for it to end, though. Ooh! Suddenly, the set was pulled away from me, and I was pushed against the lockers by a strong force. The set hit the lockers as well at, as well on the opposite end of the hallway, letting out a girly grunt of pain. <laughs> Ooh! Hello. That's a teacher. So you're a teacher too. Looking good, teacher. I looked up to see my art teacher, Miss Mrs. Gordon, holding me back against the lockers with a look of surprise and serious concern on her face. Miss Anderson, what are you doing? Well, having some fun, beating up Lisette, <laughs> kissing some boys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I looked to see Lisette being held back by Mrs. Phillips, <laughs> starting to cry. Oh, come on. Innocently. Oh, she did it to do to do. I knew what was going to come out of her mouth. So I tried to push Miss, Mrs. Gordon, Miss Gordon off to confront her. Miss Gordon, however, kept an arm wrapped around me, keeping me back. No. Don't you dare start crying, Lisette. You started this! Miss Anderson, get a hold of yourself! What is wrong with you? What did I ever do to you? I couldn't stop the angry tears running down my face as I shouted across the hallway. The sad and Mrs. Mrs. Phillips started to shook, shook at my screams as Mrs. Miss Gordon tightened her hold on me. I'm so sick of it! Leave me alone! Eventually, I lost my energy and began. <laughs> so that teacher must be strong, and began to weigh down on Mrs. Miss Gordon's arms, letting my sadness take over and quench my anger with tears and swelling pain. I could feel Miss Gordon hug me, to her to keep me uptight as Lisette sniffled and confided, "Mrs. Phillips, I didn't do anything to her. She just attacked me all of a sudden." Those kind of people annoy me the most. Ooh. <sighs> Lying scumbags. That's a lie, Lisette. You tripped her on purpose. You've always been a snobby prick to us. You go, Suzu. Never! I gave my condolences about her grandfather's death. I try to keep everyone calm. Is that so wrong? She's getting me mad, man. Ooh. You didn't even sound sincere. We know you were only pretending to be nice to spite us. Enough. Miss White, follow me to the dean's office. Lisette followed, wiping her eyes in faint innocence. She knew how to play up. I remained still in Miss... 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 Gordon's arms, unable to bring myself to fight to get at Lisette again. I had done my damage. The gaggle of Lisette wannabes would make sure I became infamous around the school. I didn't care. I made my statement on Lisette's face and body, and I wasn't afraid to do it again. Miss Gordon, however, wasn't done with me. Come with me, sweetie. I nodded and followed. My friends frowned as they watched me leave, but they headed to class without me. Miss Gordon led me to an empty classroom which she had claimed as hers, as hers. It looked like all of, all of the other classrooms, but art posters lined the wall. 
Many students loved the room, but hated one thing. The mirror in the very back of the room. It was the one thing Miss Gordon loved to use against her students. With it, she was able to see who was using their phones and who was actually studying. Smart teacher! Miss Gordon led me to the back of the room and set me down in front of it. What do you see? <laughs> well, she didn't get hurt by Lucette. That's what I see. <laughs> huh? Tell me what you see. I looked in the mirror and saw myself. My clothes were a little ruffled from the fight, but beyond that, I just saw me. Nothing about me seemed different than normal. I see myself. All right. What else? You! I see you! What else? I don't understand. Do you know what I see? I see a brilliant woman who has been working her butt off to try and find herself. She just has a little bit of adversary in her way. What does this have to do with what happened with Lisette? Listen, don't think about Lisette right now. She's just another student who doesn't know what you're going through. I stared at myself in the mirror, unable to tear my eyes away. She was right, but I still lingered on what happened with Lisette. I know Miss Gordon was only trying to help, but I couldn't fight the thoughts in my head. Miss Gordon gently rubbed my shoulders, snapping me from my thoughts. I looked up to see her smile down at me through the mirror. You know, those were some pretty interesting moves. Taekwondo. Oh yeah. Yeah. You'll have to show me one day. I laughed as she hugged me gently. Look, don't let the set get to you, okay? You have your own battles to face, and you can face them just fine. Instead of fighting Lisette, focus on your goals. I looked up at her and nodded slightly. It was cliché to hear, but she was telling the truth. I needed to focus on myself first. She gave me a small packet of tissues and told me that she would handle Lisette. The fear about my family learning of this that had quickly appeared had vanished when she promised to keep me out of it as much as she could. Everything will be fine now. You're a good student, so I'll let you off with a severe warning. Just don't get into any more fights, okay? Now, head to class. This is a teacher that I really like. She knows the person. She knows her students. She knows that this is something that uh, Miss, A Miss Anderson would never do. And she's taking action on that. Instead of a teacher that would just be angry and shout and punish someone. She looks deeper and I like that. I nodded before heading to class. Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went off without another incident. Yay. I went to my classes, had lunch, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for the school to end, I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. Huh? A text? From Dad? I'll be picking you up today. Make sure you're ready to go when I get there. That's kind of a surprise. Oh, what is she gonna tell me now, man? That I suck? <sighs> I quickly headed back to my locker and got my things before waiting for Naomi and Suzu. Hey, are you ready to go? Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. We'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. Yeah, <laughs> alright. We're not going to talk about the fight that just happened? No? Okay. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to say this. Why was he? Why was he going? <laughs> why was he going to pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. Of course, you did something wrong. You beat a, You beat the shit out of some girl, man. <laughs> I waved goodbye to Naomi and Susie before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picks me up. I took the time to listen to my music while I waited. I need to go to another Rise of the Phoenix concert. Eventually, I'd played the entire album with no one showing up. That's not a good sign. What the hey? That's never late. Especially not this late. I quickly dialed my dad's number again, but as soon as I pressed call, it disconnected and re read a signal disconnection error message. What the? No signal error? How do I not have a signal? 
I double-checked my phone and saw all five bars for signal. He must be in a dead zone. Before I could finish, a group of hands grabbed at my hands, feet, and covered my mouth. I screamed into the hands over my mouth, struggling to pull away from the hands grabbing at my limbs. It felt disgusting and scary, feeling their hands on me. I needed it to stop. Hey! Don't dirty up Malix's prey! Oh, she looks so scared. Stupid, stupid devil woman. The voice, which sends a fearful shiver down my spine, whispered into my ear. You're coming with me, Miss Anderson. I was thinking about thinking that that was what you're going to do. I couldn't fathom what was happening, but before I knew it, I was blindfolded and my limbs were quickly tied up. I felt myself being carried somewhere and was shoved into something that echoed the interior of a bus or a van. The door closed and off I was taken, unsure of where I was going and why. All I knew was that I was in trouble. Well, yeah, that's obvious. All I saw was darkness. I felt numb and I was taken to a place I didn't know of. I couldn't even move my lips to scream. Sound zipped past my ears. First of the interior of the car, then the outside. Then an echo echoey space with a whisper and cackles of people vibrating through it. However, the warp around my eyes was eventually removed from my face and my bonds were cut. It took a while for my eyes to adjust. But I found myself in a warehouse, surrounded by devils, including Malix, who was smirking at me. Nicely done! <laughs> I'm sure those little shits will come running to find you when they realize you didn't return to your precious little mansion. They'll search everywhere for you. Malix walked over and set the barrel of his gun against the skin of my eyes. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. Amoris! Amoris! <laughs> All of a sudden, a pur bright purple light engulfed the room, causing the devils around me to cover themselves. What the? Ugh. Gusts of winds rushed past me, almost forcing me back. I covered my face, my ar I covered my face with my arms. Bracing myself and standing my ground, I tried to pick through my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. As the gust slowly started to die, the light began to fade, revealing a very pissed off Sam. Here we go! Sam! Don't worry, I gotcha. At that moment, Sam didn't even give Malik's chance to breathe. As I blinked, I saw Sam's fist! ram itself into Malik's cheek, sending the devil flying back against the wall of the warehouse we were in. You motherfucker! Sam was resentment. Uh, sorry. He quickly followed Malik to the wall and began slamming his fist into Malik's body. An imprint of Malik's body began to form into the wall as Malik was beaten in. The remaining devil star stared, trying to figure out what to do. Help Malik or watch his silence? Ares, however, walked up beside me and crossed her arms as she watched with amused, met an amused smirk on her face. Get off! While a blast of heat, Sam was forced back from Malix. Sam slid on the balls of his feet, covering his face from the burst of heat that forced him back. Malix, on the other hand, was practically on fire. His menacing eyes glared deadly daggers at Sam, and Malik gripped his gun. You're dead, Incubus! Malik pried himself from the wall and began to fire hot bullets at Sam. However, none of the shots made it to Sam's body. In the blink of an eye, Sam had disappeared from his spot and reappeared at Malik's side, ready to lay a heavy punch to Malik's head. Too slow! Malik, though, wasn't as slow as Sam thought. Malix quickly turned to shoot at Sam, who barely had time to dodge it. I quickly turned into it's sorry. It quickly turned into a fight of Sam, using his speed to dodge and try to hit Malix, and Malix using his gun and devil-like skills to try and lock onto Sam's appear appearing form. It was almost too fast to follow. However, I could tell something inside Sam had changed. He wasn't holding anything back in this fight. 
It was as if something incredibly demonic had taken a hold of him and forced every punch he threw and every step he made. Was this the extent of demon power? I didn't have a chance to answer myself, as Sam tried to dodge Malix. Sam tripped and landed on one knee with a loud thump. <coughs> gotcha, bitch! I gasped in horror. Sam had no chance to dodge or run. I could only stare, petrified, as Malik charged forward and jammed the barrel of his gun into Sam's mouth. Eat hellfire, Igibus! Then, at that moment, something in the air changed. The air instantly went from frantic to still in energy. What could have been described in tone as the color red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple and green as everything began to blend together at once. My eyes never strayed from Sam's face, however. Even as it changed, his eyes began to glow, a go bright golden color as Sam began to bite down on the gun in his mouth. Jeez! As the trigger was pulled, the gun was snapped in two between Sam's teeth. You go, Sam! Small fragments of the gun flew everywhere while the look on Malik's face went from confused to petrified. Before Malik could utter a single response, Sam let out a giant animalistic roar, sending waves of fear down my spine, and tackled Malik to the ground. Okay! You go, Sam, scary boy! I stared at Sam. I stared as Sam began to slam punches into Malik's face, one right after the other. Sam's skin began to morph and shift with each punch, changing from human to something else. A demon, of course! Before I was allowed to see Sam's new form, however, a pair of hands quickly covered my eyes. Instinctively, I, I reached up and gritted them, trying to pull them off. A voice stopped me. It's me. Don't look. I want to look, man. Well, I don't know. It doesn't sound very nice. I listened carefully and let the two, a last two words linger in my mind. Don't look. Why? What was being hidden from me? I wanted to know, but something told me to obey Damien's command. I could still hear Sam screaming and grunting with each punch he rammed into Malik's face, with the occasional cracking of bone and blood splatter echoing in the air. Maybe it was better that I wasn't able to see. That's enough, Sam! Almost instantly after James' command, the sound stopped. The only thing anyone could hear then was Sam's pants and grunt for air. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath. Malix is dead and you've lost your glamour spell. Shut up. <laughs> glamour spell? What did he mean? Why did Sam sound so different? Why was this being hidden from me? It's a spell that makes us look human. I figured. I froze. Look human? They didn't look like humans after all. What did they look like? Like demons. Yeah, now now, now I know what you're talking about. I have never seen a demon, Damien. As if Matthew knew what Damien was talking about, Matthew spoke up, followed by the sound of the cork popping out of a bottle. Well, not for much longer. Here. Ooh. Let's go. You gotta regain your glamour spell and you're all out of energy. Come on. Fine. Whatever. Whatever. I could hear the small clinking of glass being passed down before hearing Sam guzzle down a liquid of some sort. The feel of the air around me gently began to warm, up, to warm back up, insinuating that everything had been returned to normal. Finally, Damien moved his hand from his eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. The devils, including Eris, had fled. On top of Malik's body was a dirty sheet that was quickly turning red from blood. I could see that Malik's face was completely caved in. God. Making a dip in the blanket. Whew! The boys, however, had gathered around me, all of them, including Sam, looking like nothing had happened. What just... 
I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head at the whole event, and I felt like speaking was impossible. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. I could only nod. What had happened boggled my mind to the point of disbelief. I was second-guessing everything, lost in the sea of what and how and when. As we walked out of the warehouse, I looked to Sam for some form of sign that I wasn't dreaming. Sam kept his eyes down and away from me. It was over. Malik's kept. Malik's was gone and the boys were finally safe. A wave of relief ran through my body at the thought of never having to deal with that group again. At the same time, a ping of realization hit the back of my mind. The boys were only going to stay until after Malix was defeated. That was our deal. As we approached home, I could feel something heavy weigh down my heart. It was late, but the boys let me inside and turned on the lights in the lobby. Finally, we can relax! It will be good to have some rest without devils breathing down our necks. Ugh, I'm just tired. Can I hit the hay early? I think some sleep would be good for all of us. Hmm. I looked at Damien, knowing he could read my mind, and frowned. I didn't want him to know about my thoughts on the situation. Yeah, that sounds good. I wanted to just end tonight. Too much had happened and I felt dizzy just trying to figure it out. However, Damien spoke up, stopping all of us from moving. Should we be gone in the morning? The air became still and with tension. The realization of the situation hit the boys like a wave, forcing them to turn to me in curiosity. They had remembered their deal and were now awaiting me to decide their fate. I gulped, face to face with reality of the situation. The boys were leaving it up to me. They looked like they were willing to accept whatever I demanded. It was only fair though, after all that had happened. I looked to Sam, feeling my heart flutter in my chest. I didn't want him to leave, but would he ask to stay? I hoped that he would say no and ask me to stay longer. As if he knew what I wanted, Sam moved and stepped to me, putting his hands in his pockets and looking down at the ground. He was still ashamed of what he had done, but he spoke to me regardless. Hey, um, I... Shit, um, I kinda, uh, I wanted to thank you for your energy and stuff. Well, I, I kinda want to stay here. Can we stay here? Please? My heart skipped while a large red blush ran across my cheeks. The boy stared at Sam wide-eyed, but didn't dare to speak out. Sam stepped back to give me space, returning to where he was. I moved my gaze across each boy, trying to make a decision. If they left in the morning, I would never see them again and my life could return to normal. If I did decide to let them go, that would have been for the best. No goodbyes, no delays. But did I want to? They had done so much for me in a small amount of time. No, oh, let them stay. We're going to let them stay. I wanted them to stay. I wanted him to stay. I merely smiled, staring at the man I had come to have feelings for before speaking at last. I would love. I would love it if you all could stay. The boys cheered tiredly, but nonetheless... Uh, oh my god, I, I have the Dutch word in my head. The boys cheered tiredly, but nonetheless enthusiastically. I giggled at the sight. It was cute to see everyone so excited, despite the tiredness that ran equally through our bodies. Today was a rough day. My home is your home, as long as you can still help with the chores. The boys nodded in unison, agreeing to the terms I had set for them. Despite the good situation, I felt myself slowly slipping into unconsciousness. However, James quickly clapped his hands together, getting everyone's attention and waking me up, making sure I didn't pass out on the floor. All right, everyone. 
We're all very tired, so let's head to bed, shall we? Oh! Yeah, sleep is actually a thing. Right. We've had a very long day, but it will be good to just relax tonight and tomorrow. Sleep sounds really good right now. Yeah, man. I watched a happy smile grow onto Sam's lips. He shared my excitement, knowing that we'd be together longer. Who n knew how long we would stay together? All I cared about was that I would be with him. The others quickly left to finally rest, leaving me and Sam alone at last. My heart fluttered a bit as Sam walked closer to me, looking to his feet. He was nervous, but it was really cute to see him that way, so I didn't do anything but smile. Hey, um, thanks for letting us stay. You're welcome, Sam. I'm happy to have you stay here. I watched his smile brighten a bit before he cleared his throat and looked up at me with a serious face. I didn't know if it was tiredness or my growing attachment to him, but I felt myself sway a bit on my feet. However, Sam's fate made it clear that he wanted to say something else, making me forget that my bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse. No, it's fine. You did what you had to do. I understand. I had accepted everything that happened and knew that Sam had to do what he had to do. He was real and he was someone I didn't want to be without, even if it meant nodding against my curiosity. Besides, I was too tired to explore that memory further. Sam nodded before holding out a hand to me. Come on, let's get you to bed. I nodded before Sam gently lifted me up into his arms like a bride and carried me to my room. I didn't want to leave his arms, leaning my head against Sam's chest, but eventually I was slowly lowered to my bed and covered with my bed covers. I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. I looked to Sam, fighting a yawn from escaping me, as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Get some sleep, alright? I'll make some breakfast again for you in the morning. I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand and leave my room closing the door. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in bed. I made a good choice. Sure, it would be hard, but I could tell that I would be able to manage it. Help around the house and being with a man whom I was slowly starting to fall for would be worth it. I slowly felt my exhaustion take over. I let sleep consume me as I drifted the darkness I as I drifted into darkness in my mind. Everything was peaceful. I was happy. That's it, guys! The end of the most beautiful game seduced me. I really, really enjoyed this game, you know? Oh man, so good. The voice acting, so good. Interesting creature. Gotcha! The story continues. Alright, so I'm gonna stop it here for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. So next time we're going, ha ha ha, you're an interesting creature. Who is this now? So let's save. Right here. Good. Bye bye.